Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk, a real talk with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Um, it is an amazing day, an amazing day. I love this. The computer is telling me what to do, what not to do. <laughs> so technology, this is all about technology. Today I have an incredible guest that she's busy doing another thing. I'm Talk sharing, about I'm <laughs> sharing us. Talk about social media. This is what I love. Hello, Don. Hi, Lisa. I'd like to introduce you to my guest, my friend, um, someone who I met. Oh my God, how long have we known Six each other? Six years ago. That's it? Feels like a lifetime. And it, it was a mutual friend. Love her. Hi, Tracy. Hi, Tracy, who introduced us, and it, it was like two peas in a pod. We just gravitated to one another, and we have seen each other grow, truly grow. And I believe a part of that growth is exactly what we're going to be talking about. So now that you have joined us, you are in for a treat. So before I go any further, hi, Sita John, how are you? And uh, we're going to do this interview, and then at the end, I'm going to do a Q&A. We can open it to a Q&A. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Sure. I don't have to answer, but yes. <laughs> I will. I will. Smart lady. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce Dawn. I call her Dawn Withy because she is very witty. Um, talk about entrepreneur, award-winning speaker, international speaker. She was just a speaker, and then she became international, award-winning speaker. She is truly an entrepreneur and a creator. Why a creator? Because she's got books, she's got merchandise, she's got everything, and it suddenly she bloomed. So her bio, you've already seen it, You, and I would like to mention that her mission is to inspire people around the world to find their own purpose and live it. So let's get down to it. Let's do it. We can talk about the B books. We can talk about your books, your creation, how it come, came about and everything. But let us go back and start with the time that I got to know you, which was the Inspire. And it was Give On. Mm. And it was all about the event that you put together. And it, it, it was just amazing. So where does this passion of yours come from being this philanthropist and giving? I think that I, I'm the oldest. I'm a Virgo. I don't know if those have anything to do with it, but I do know that always my whole life I've always wanted to be of service. And I think that that's why we're all here, is mm -hmm. to help each other through this thing called life. And so anything I can do to help somebody else, and when I see something that I don't think is okay in the world, where you know people are hungry, I, I want to do something. I don't want to just say, oh my gosh, it's really sad. I want to go in and make it better. So that's where it's, it, that's what motivates me and drives me. So how did it start? I give on and then I inspire. Tell us all about how this evolution started to where you are now, and then we can talk about everything else. Well, I was a stay-at-home mom for many, many years, and I loved being a mom. I loved being part of my daughter's lives and knowing what they were doing and picking them up from school. And when they got to be older, I needed to find out what I needed, wanted to do in the world. And so I just... I wanted to make an impact, the biggest impact I could make, and, you know, it, it evolved. You know, I give on with a, a notion of, you know, helping businesses while I was helping raise money for charities and okay. causes. And then it kind of morphed into desire to inspire, and I wanted to share, you know, when we turn on the news, we see negative story, tragedy, fires, death, destruction, all of the time. And I thought there are so many people doing amazing things in the world. And I wanted to share those stories, and then I went to Africa, and I met these people who are struggling for basic necessities, water on a daily basis, food on a daily basis. Yet they take in ch child after child. Mama Josephine in Uganda has 67 children. If you've ever volunteered in a child's classroom with 20 or 30 kids, 
imagine raising 67 children, not knowing wow. where you're going to feed yourself the next day. And, you know, that inspires me. And when I think my life's hard, I look at the challenges she faces, and I said, you know, I can't even complain. I don't have anything to complain about, and I wanted to share those stories with others so that we could all look at our own lives and see the blessings and all that we have to be grateful for. And then, then I Give On kind of went away because it morphed into the Beeline products because I wanted it to be more in alignment with my books and the foundation, and so here we are today. So Don that I know, mm -hmm. uh, the giver, you love children. I do. Yes. She loves children. You love animals. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, because I know we've traveled together, and if there is any child, she gravitates and goes and talks to the child mm -hmm. and completely forgets about the parents. <laughs> so <laughs> I do that with the dogs, too. <laughs> That's true. And so there is that commonality that you and I have. It's of being service, of giving, and truly embracing what is uh, before us. Your life was not smooth. Your life has not been such a beautiful, glorified, colorful. So tell us a little bit about where Don grew up and who you were as seven-year-old. Oh my goodness, I don't even know if I can remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, you do. Um, I grew up in Ohio, a small town in Ohio. I'm the oldest of three. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were working class people, you know, not, we're just average, everyday people. Um, I went to college. I didn't really, I started out studying psychology. And I got to a point where I thought, you know, do I want to sit there and listen to people tell me their problems all day long? That would really, as an empath, that's a horrible thing for me. <laughs> Because I take it all in. So I, I said I wanted to take some time off, go out into the world, kind of see what's out there. Because when you're a kid, you don't know all the different things that are available to you, all the different opportunities. And so I, I moved to California because, you know, from Ohio, so California sounded wonderful. California is the best place to be. It's a very lovely place, I will say that. Um, and I met my former husband. I got married. I had my children. I raised my children. As I said, I was a stay-at-home mom. I loved it. And, you know, I volunteered every opportunity that I got. I was PTA president. I was public works commissioner. I was a uh, school site council, national charity league. But I just did whatever came my way because I just thought this, these are opportunities for me to grow and learn. And um, then, again, when they, they got into college, I had to sit there and really, like, go in deep and say, you know, what is my purpose anymore? My purpose was my daughters for so long. And now that they're off doing their own life, then I felt like I had nothing, no purpose. My purpose was gone. And I had to re-figure that out. So how do we, as women, uh, not only the stay-home moms, but also the working women with career and everything, how do we find our purpose and not the career? Mm. Well, that's a funny story. Because one day I remember sitting outside and I was just like, God, you know, what am I good at? Like, why am, what, what am I here to do? And I heard in my head, you're good at loving people. And my thought was, what? What do you do with that? <laughs> like, but I've, I've taken the love I have for people and for animals, and I've turned it into something that is loving people, but in a way that is, a jo is work. So it's asking yourself the question, what do I love to do? What am I good at doing? And those are the things that lead you to that thing that, like, like stirs that fire within you. You know, so many uh, years ago, someone told me that you will find your passion. And when you find your passion, you can't wait to wake up and do whatever it is. And for years, I was just doing, and I'm going, how do I know what is my passion? How do I know this is my purpose? How do I know? I mean, do I get a lightning strike or something? How do we know the purpose that we are not only purpose driven, but we are walking the walk. It's when you love doing it. You love getting out of bed every morning. You say, I get to do this, not I have to do this. And granted, there are going to be some parts of everything that you do that you don't like. You know, like doing dishes is not my favorite part of being a mom, but it's part of being a mom. Um, but it's the thing that, you know, you would do if you would pay somebody to allow you to do this thing. Okay. So, 
I know for a fact that you, your necklace says believe, mm -hmm. which starts with a B-E. And the belief system, and if our belief system is something negative, that we don't believe in ourselves, how can we believe in the work that we do? Mm -hmm. And I'm asking all these questions is because in a way, what you do is to empower people. Mm -hmm. Your books are about belief. Be yourself. Be what you want to be. Become the thing you want to become. And in a way to heal within, we also have to believe that we we are worthy. Mm, that's it. That's right? the biggest part of the struggle. Exactly. So how do we know we are worthy? How do we come to believe what we want to be? I think we have to understand that we are all born for greatness. We are all put here. We are all special. We are all unique in our own ways. We're not supposed to fit into any kind of mold mm. that society's told us we're supposed to be. And it's really, it's faith. You have to... You, you have to do some things in your life to, to, to feel like I, I've accomplished some things and then you can build on that. But really just you existing is makes you special. And that's what I love telling the children in Africa when I go visit them and I speak to them. I want them to know that they're not a poor child that's struggling for food. I want them to know that they're a gift from God and that they are here for a reason. And I want them to believe in themselves because I know they can do anything they put their mind to. Exactly. You see, uh, I believe every single one of my clients who comes in here, when they truly want to make that change within themselves, and we're not talking about huge transformations because it may happen, it may not happen, but the step that we take to begin doing anything we want in life is the step forward to believing in ourselves. Yes. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Your B has a whole series. How many series of B books are there? We have, I have seven books out. Okay. Um, my favorite one is my little book of B. I didn't bring that with me, but okay. we've given out almost 2,500 copies to children all over Africa, five different countries. And it, they have seven words, and the seven words are, like, if, th there's seven words that if we all chose to be, we could live our happiest and healthiest, most fulfilling lives. And sorry for spitting. <laughs> Here, you did not. What are the seven words? It's be love, be kind, be grateful, be inspired, be happy, be strong, and be genuine. Be ah. yourself. Show up in the world as you truly are. Okay. Well, you show up just like who you are. I don't know how to be anybody else. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because in life, we know that uh, there is a show for social media and everything, and then you get to know them, there's another part. This is the raw talk. So when we talk about that, how do we come to share with our gifts and everything? And because a lot of people are afraid to be themselves. Hmm. It's being authentic. It's like, I am authentic. And then there's different masks we wear. We all have masks. Everybody's right? wearing masks. Everybody <laughs> is wearing a mask. One mask is motherhood. One mask is career woman. One mask is being the sexy woman. You know, there's all kinds of uh, persona versus masks. Mm. And if we peel away the persona and we say be authentic, what is authentic? It's being who you are called to be. Which yeah. is the genuine the genuine loving, you. yes, kind person that you are, that you were born to be. We're all born perfect. Are we? We are. We are. In God's eyes, we are. In God's eyes. And then the humans start judging. Yes. yes. And that's where uh, we stop believing in ourselves. Okay. And it, it builds up over time. And until you get to that place where you're like, I don't want to feel like this anymore. I want to feel good about being in my own skin. I don't have to try to be like anybody else. You know, I remember when I um, was first uh, in the PTA at my daughter's school, I was one of the younger moms at the school, and I, all of these people had, like, like degrees and amazing jobs. They were attorneys and doctors, and here I was, you know, this young 20-some-year-old girl coming in, and I thought, oh, maybe I'm supposed to dress like that. Maybe I'm supposed to do that. In my mind, I'm thinking that. Mm. And then I got to this place. It's like, be you. 
dress the way you like to dress because that's going to be. But you're not accepted. And you know what? It doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't it? matter. At, at this point in my life, and I think maybe when you get older, you get to that place <laughs> where it's like, I don't even care if somebody doesn't like me because it's not about me. Okay. I have to like me. And I'm being the best me I can be, you know, and if somebody doesn't like me, well, they're not my people. Okay. But you have evolved to this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. So someone who is a young mom, someone who wants to conquer, have this career, have this perfect home, the, the child and everything, um, how do we share with them is be yourself, be kind, be loving, be genuine. You have to be it. That is the best way to teach anybody anything is be a role model and show up as that person. Mm. And people will learn more and get it more than if you teach them or preach to them or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. You just Who was your role model? Um, you know, I thought about this when I was in Africa. Um, in Africa? Yeah, I was, because cause I was walking down the, 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 the dirt path one day, and I was, you know, and I walk around, and I'm like, hello, good morning, good morning. <laughs> and everybody says good morning back. It's such a beautiful place to be. And in I, English? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Okay. And uh, I, it, I flashed in my mind, you know, I don't know if you saw Beauty and the Beast, the Disney movie, many years ago. Yes. And Belle is, like, in the town square, like, with her basket, and she's just going, bonjour, bonjour to everybody. <laughs> and I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm Belle. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked up to the Disney princesses. They were beautiful. They were kind. The animals loved them. They loved the animals. They're always doing good things. Those were my role models. <laughs> That's great. That's great. It's like it's Alice sad. in the Wonderland. <laughs> Way back. It's not sad. It's not sad. Because I think every single human being has a role model. Yes. Except who we choose as a role model, that's, that's one of the things that we have to look. And the sad part is that they're animated. <laughs> they're not like real yours? people. Yes. Okay. But they're taken from somewhere. Yes. It's someone's imagination of this is the perfect child or this is the perfect character. I mean, as children, we look at cartoons. I don't know if cartoons, I mean, people grow up with either soap operas or drama movie or action movie. Now kids are watching all these gamers are doing all this killing, murder, mayhem and everything. So what's their role model? This robotic thing, mm. that it's nothing but kill, murder, mayhem, and it's like, how many do you destroy, and I give you credit by how many you destroy. So, that's all realizing that it's impacting us spiritually, physically, mentally, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what we busy ourselves with yes. is a reminder, because... You know, our feelings are connected to our subconscious. Our thoughts are, are conscious. So what we think is everything that we think and we memorize. And all that becomes part of our feeling that our behavior, our patterns and everything is what is ingrained from who was our role model growing up. Who was our role model in our career. We all have someone who has helped us. Who helped you? Who was the person who was your biggest support? Either man, woman, whoever. Uh, I think it was my dad. I would say my dad. My dad is, was very kind soul. He loved everybody. He loved the animals. He was just a good man. And so he was like my biggest supporter. Okay. So, B, how do you be? How do I be? You know, one of the things years ago, uh, when was it that you launched the bee line and you had the perfumes and everything and we came and the way you spoke so eloquently from the heart, no script, no nothing. It's the same way as I had a client just two days ago and he says, well, what kind of a script are you going to use? And I'm going, you know, after 22 years of doing the work that I do, I have no script. When you come in, what we are supposed to do, how I take you into hypnosis, and the work that we do, 
I have no script. You and what's happening in the session is the script. And when you spoke, how you created this beautiful beeline, the perfumes, and we were there to test the perfumes, we were there to test this and that, and this entire thing, the people who surrounded you, mm. they came for you. Okay? Yeah. Not for your products. Yes, I'm very blessed. Right? Yes. So I think no matter what products we have, that you have, either for the face, tell me about this one. This is, uh, this is a coffee scrub. I love this. <laughs> Um, I used a ton of it today because my skin is really dry. Southern California is really dry right now. So it's a very moisturizing. It's exfoliating. It's nourishing. You know, one of the things that got me started down this path is because, you know, when we buy the things on the market, you know, they've got mineral oil. They've got things that aren't good for your skin. And everything we put on our skin gets absorbed into our bodies just like we ate it. Of and I never knew that. You know, I put like whatever, like it's a wrinkle cream, give it to me. But then I realized that that's just like me consuming it. And so I wanted to create something that w that worked, but was using all natural products. And when I, because I've seen all the magical ingredients that grow, the things that grow in Africa, I wanted to use African ingredients to create these. So you just said something, and I want to bring it out. And you said you use it today. Today, before you came in here, you said you went and got a massage. I did. Okay. Did you get the massage with the scrub? No. Okay. The reason I'm saying it, because most folks don't even consider this, but the person who is massaging you, their energy, as it's touching you with the products they're using, they're also instilling their energy, mm. their thought, onto your body. And your skin being the biggest organ that has the antenna, which is our skin and our pores, take in not only the products, mm. the energy of the person who made the products, if it was made with love, or if it's a product that it's going to not only take care of you, your skin, your body, your being, it's also the way they touch it's impacting them and your people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the reason I asked about your massage was because you said I used it, and then I'm like, did you exfoliate and got a massage? So you're doing literally utilizing everything aspect of it. So next time, use it. <laughs> I will ask them. <laughs> Can you use this, please? Yeah. So, most people don't think about it. Every product, the, the way you pour love into this, or the person who made it for you, and how they got replenished, and how the person who is receiving this is going to replenish and feel good about it. Mm. Yes. And this one? This is my body butter, and I love this stuff. I use it on my legs, I use it on my body, I use it on my face, I use it on my dogs. And it literally healed my dog's nose. Her nose was really okay. dry. Because it's, it's, there's nothing toxic. It's like if she, if she licked it off, okay. it wasn't going to hurt her. Okay. So I thought, I'm going to try it. And it worked. So I it, use it on everything. It's, it's natural and it's amazing. I call it magic. Right. I love this one. I was gifted one of those. And I lit this candle. And I light it. Um, like every time I come into my bedroom... I light it, I do my med meditation, I do a, literally, it's so, it, it's strong, and yet not overbearing. Mm. So, it's beautiful. Uh, the candle has, what kind of a scent? What the is scent it? of the candle is the same scent as my fragrance. The so, beeline. I know that doesn't help anybody listening, but it is. Believe it or not, it is there is different scents, or you only I, I have still one? only stuck with the one. You the stuck original. with the, the original, yeah, which is the best one. So, with the products, how is the products? If we are purchasing the products, who is it helping, and how is it giving on? So, seven dollars from every item purchased from my purchased from my website goes to the Desire to Inspire Foundation, which is my foundation, and those funds are going to help 
people in in Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, not Rwanda, we're not doing anything in Rwanda at the moment, Uganda, Sierra Leone, and Ghana. Beautiful. Why Africa? You know, I've asked myself that so many times throughout my whole life. When I was a little girl, Africa just sounded, I don't know if it was National Geographic or whatever, it just planted the seed. I remember hearing when I was a little girl that, you know, there, there are children starving. You know, as we sit there and open the refrigerator, Mom, there's nothing to eat, and the fridge is completely full of stuff. And then you realize that there are children that literally don't have food, and it always just hurt my heart. And I met somebody several years ago, and she was from Ghana, and she said, you should come. And I said, you know what? I'm going to. I was on that journey of figuring out who I am, what I want to do. And I said, you know what? If I've always wanted to do it, let me go do it. And my life but it is commendable same. because I believe everyone is attracted to one thing. It speaks to their heart. It's part of your purpose. It's part of our purpose. The same way as my, my purpose is uh, to have a foundation for motherless children in the California area, especially in the Los Angeles County and everything. And so we are all drawn for a reason to something that speaks to our heart. Um, what do you do for fun? Um, well, gosh, you know what? I love the work that I get to do. So that to me is fun because I get to talk to people like you. This is yes. always fun. Um, I love hanging out with my dogs. You know, they just bring me so much joy. Uh, I like going to the beach. I love the ocean. I love traveling to places with an ocean. <laughs> <laughs> And we have traveled together to the ocean, and and Jason Walker said, "Hi, Jason Walker." Oh, hi, Jason. <laughs> and that's where we met Jason. Yes, at the beach. Yes. <laughs> Hello, Rosa. We have Maureen here. Hi, and Maureen. Maureen. Uh, yes, purpose and passion. Oh, let me do this. When you love what you do, you'll never work another day. Absolutely so true. And I am grateful to have friends. You know, they say. Uh, in order for you to be what you want, become the person you always dreamed of. So it's stepping into it. Mm. Stepping into if you want to be uh, the richest person in the world, they say, imagine it, step into it, and become it. And a lot of person, you know, so many people will say, but, you know, that's hogwash mm -hmm. because I can't do that. But as we come to believe as we come to realize what we want in our life what we desire in our life is exactly our purpose then we peel away all the things that no longer works for us yeah. and it can be emotionally physically mentally or the people around us um, being in a situation that is toxic being in a city, in a relationship, in anything that is toxic, do you believe we have choices? I do. I do. I believe we have free will. Okay. Um, talking about raw talk, was it easy for you to move to where you are, or did you struggle with the decision of making the change? from being a mom, being a wife, to where you are today? Well, you know, being the stay-at-home mom, that, that decision was made before, for me, you know, like I didn't have a choice. When you said yes to, I do. <laughs> well, no, but I'm saying, like, not when, them, when they left, you know, when they got to be older and adults. Like, it would have been unfair of me to make them stay and let me pack their lunches every day when they're in their 30s. That's just ridiculous. Um, but... Yeah, yeah, there were some difficult choices along the way, and I am grateful for the choices that I made. Uh, leaving my marriage was very hard. I was married for almost 30 years, and to walk away from somebody you love and care about. I still love and care about him. Um, that's a hard thing to do. So what, why is that choice of I matter uh, trumps we must? I think it's because when you're not bringing your best self to a situation, you're not giving the world or the energy that, that you can give them the in the best way. The, the relationship, your children, your friends, anybody, your work, like if you're not feeling at your happiest and your best self, you're not going to be bringing that out into the world. And so, you know, sometimes you have to make some choices. Not everybody can go with you, you know, on your path. And that doesn't mean you don't love them anymore. It doesn't mean you don't care for them anymore. Just sometimes they, 
aren't part of the, the journey, the journey, the next step of the journey. Okay, which on a train, there are many compartments, and I say there's time that we have to let go of a compartment and continue on a journey and bring on different passengers. And the passengers that their ticket has expired, we must ask them to. <laughs> yes, that's how I do it. You know, everything I, uh, not everything, but so much of the work that I do is metaphors. Mm. And this reminds me, I was thinking of the same thing this morning of, you know, a lot of people cannot see the future because they're constantly in the past and the shame, in the guilt, in all that. The hurt. And the hurt, mm -hmm. right? So there is a time that we have to self-empower in order for us to move on to the journey, to our gift, to the creation and everything, and realize that we're not saying step, stomp on people, but, and it's not being selfish, because a lot of people think that selfish means self-centered, I'm gonna stomp on people, but it's knowing that you matter as much as others do. And that's the B kind, be loving, be genuine, be uh, all your seven B's. You know, it's, fun, it's funny that you said that because my first, when I wrote my first book, loving, it was be loving. Right. And then I said, no, no, I don't want it to be loving. I want it to be be love. So that is both giving and receiving love. It's not just putting it out there. It is both. Be able to receive. Be love. Be love. Like that is what you are. You are born from love. Yes. We are love. And love is the highest power. It's the highest currency. It's everything. That's why you're here. So, if there is any questions, by all means, we are open to answer any questions. In the meantime, we talked about the hard times, the good times, your products. What's next? Oh, um, I am putting together um, some courses that people mm -hmm. can sign up and take um, based on some of the aha moments, the lessons I've learned on my journey to make my life easier. You know, as I used to be get really anxious if things weren't perfect or like, oh my gosh, I've got all this stuff to do and you can feel it welling up inside and, you, you know, and I, I let that go, you know, and it's, li it's, it's not an easy thing. It takes some practice and it takes some time to get there, but it's literally repeating to yourself, like, I'm doing the best I can. Stop being so hard on yourself, and things are going to work out the way they're supposed to. Mm -hmm. And you can bring your best self to something if you're not anxious and worried and, you know, all that stuff. So you're going to do a better job if you come to it from a place of peace and calm and happiness. So, you know, things like that, I want to teach people how to get there, too, because being happy, feeling fulfilled, and being able to be of service to others is why I think we're all here. And so it's a beautiful place to be in. And I want everybody to be in this like wonderful place where they find joy and happiness just in every single day. It doesn't have to be anything super special like going on a vacation or a trip or do buying you yourself. Um, you know, I try. Okay. I, I do most of my meditating when I'm vacuuming. <laughs> <laughs> That's a form of meditation. It is. Allow, but, you know, not only vacuuming, ironing. I don't do that anymore. <laughs> okay, but that's a form of meditation people are not realizing. I know what I can say to you. <laughs> there was a time that my meditation was when I was scrubbing the bathtub and the kitchen floor. And why? Because when you do this monotonous thing and you allow your mind to flow mm -hmm. and you're not analyzing, criticizing, judging yourself, that's a form of meditation. It's allowing things to, it's like opening yourself to receiving messages, to receiving and even feeling, what is it that I feel at this moment? And being present. And that monotonous thing is just like breath work. It takes you to this place of just being present with yourself and with what is. That, I believe, is a form of meditation. It is. It is. You know, you think you're supposed to do it this way. You're supposed to be sitting in a certain pose. and According know, to who? According to the people that tell you. But in your mind, that's what I used to think. But, you know, I get, like, some of my best ideas when I'm in the shower. Uh, I find that, like, if I have music on, 
I don't get the same kind of, I don't receive as mm-hmm. much because I'm listening to external. But when I just like I'm in the shower, that is when things, you know, I get, ins- that's where I came up with Desire to Inspire Foundation. The name of it. And all that because the water was trickling and washing away everything else and became clear. Mm-hmm. So I thank you, first and foremost, for saying yes to being a part of the real talk. Always. Always. And real means raw. Um, creating this, it's like waking up at 5 o'clock or sometimes not even sleeping until you have a chapter put together that mm-hmm. you are happy with. Yeah. And so in life, I believe we edit. We edit so much of who we are. We constantly do this self-check in making sure that all is well. And then there's times just like today when we have having uh, like uh, technical issues for the first few moments we just say, you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. I am who I am just as I am. And always remember when you think of I am my body or I am my emotions, I am all this, that's a concept because you are not anything except who you are. You have a body, you have a mind, and you have a life or your family and the things that you have. But who you are is a child of God and we are of grace. Because the moment of birth and the moment that we leave our body, at that moment, the body's weight remains the same. But the soul is no longer there. So I am not of my body. I am who I am. It's the spirit that you have, that gives on, that inspires, and is true love. And I thank you for that. I love it. <laughs> thank you. So for all of you who are here, please subscribe to Real Talk. You can also watch this on Lisa.tv. And this show will go on. Until we meet again, I thank you. I love you, girl. I love you. So... Thank you very much for being present, and until next time, God bless you, and may the universal light surround you. Bye, and thank you for being a part of us. Oh, and happy birthday last week, we Lisa. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.